Hello friends. Today in this video, I am going to be in-depth recapping every episode of Season 2 of the 2022 horror series from. I have done Season 1 if you want to check that one out first, and the link to that video will be in the description below. But if you haven't seen the show in a while, and want a full recap of every episode before you watch Season 3, you are in the right place. Every episode will be timestamped in the description below, so you can skip to a specific episode if you would like or just watch the whole season. Obviously there will be spoilers for the show in this video, and if you're alright with that, here we go. Episode 1. Strangers in a Strange Land The series begins with Boyd waking up after a dream, and he is still stuck in the stone structure that he left the last season in. A man on the bus riding through town named Elgin wakes up from a nap and causes a scene and upsetting the other bus goers. With the storm raging in, Colony House is in distress with injuries and people frantically trying to save the equipment before they lose all hope of sending out a radio message. Julie runs back to town after Jim, who went to check on Tabitha. Jim sees that hole in the basement of the house is closed off with debris, and Tabitha is obviously missing. Underground, Tabitha and Victor make their way through tunnels, and Victor explains they have to be quiet as the monsters are sleeping. The bus stops in front of the diner as the driver looks to get directions. Ellis and Tom eventually find them and tell them to sit tight so they can be led into the diner. Julie finds Jim in the basement, and he urges her to get help. Julie asks Tom for help, and he and two bus passengers travel to the basement to help Jim dig out the debris. Shortly after, Donna and Kenny arrive and get the passengers into the diner. Boyd hears a voice in the structure's opening that tells him to climb before a rope is thrown down. Jade continues to see the mysterious symbol and a mannequin. Later, he and Ethan look through Victor's room for further evidence of the symbol. Victor gets scared in the tunnel after seeing the identical mannequin Jade hallucinated, and Tabitha has to get him to keep moving. Donna tries to tell the bus driver about the town, but she won't listen and thinks she is crazy. Soon after, Elgin has a seizure while Jim's house collapses, trapping all four men underneath the rubble. Christy is reunited with the nurse on the bus, as the two know each other and turns out she is Christy's fiancé that she told Kenny about. Jim tells Julie and Donna to leave them buried under the rubble for the evening, as they won't be able to dig them out in time before dark, and they oblige, covering it with tarps. As the bus driver tries to get the passengers back on the bus, all hell breaks loose as Donna shoots the bus tire to keep them from getting killed at night, and Kenny tries to regain order by firing another shot into the air. Boyd makes it out and ends up in a cave, where he finds an older man chained to the wall. Episode 2. The Kindness of Strangers Boyd finds skeletons chained to the wall in the room he finds himself in with Martin, who pleads with him to kill him. Mass hysteria ensues at the diner as Donna attempts to keep everyone calm. Victor and Tabitha seek shelter in a trailer, where Victor has gathered a bunch of belongings over time. Mary talks to Christy about her absence, still upset, as she believes Christy just left her and has only been two hours away for the last six months. As Boyd tries to free Martin from his shackles, a music box begins to play, and Martin urges Boyd to leave before the music stops. Kenny tries to distract Julie in the diner from worrying about her dad. Fatima tries to get other busgoers who ran into the post office but has to flee inside with Ellis when the monsters come. Soon after that, they hear death coming from the streets. Jim and Tom continue to placate Brick as he begins coughing up blood and struggling with the sounds around him and none of them can move. One of the busgoers tries to leave and steals Kenny's gun, holding him at gunpoint. He threatens to leave with Kenny but Donna doesn't budge, and when a knock on the window distracts him, Kenny regains control of the gun, and Donna hits him with the shotgun. Boyd continues trying to free Martin, but pauses when Martin brings up Abby. Boyd then notices something crawling under Martin's skin just before Martin scratches his arm and places his bloody wrists against the cut. Martin dies, and Boyd leaves the room only to find himself outside in the forest, surrounded by nothing. He's approached by the same dog as before, and he then follows it into the woods. A monster gets on the bus and kills two busgoers hiding there who didn't believe Donna's warnings. Boyd escapes through the woods, avoiding monsters, and ends up at the trailer where Victor and Tabitha are. They let him inside, and before they shut the door, Elgin shows up, and they begrudgingly let him inside with the monsters on his tail. Brick begins to choke, making a lot of noise, and seemingly dies. Soon after that, a monster comes and kills Tom. The sun rises, and Julie and the others find Tom dead, but Jim's still alive. Boyd notices things crawling under his skin, just like Martin's, as the four from the trailer return to town. Episode 3. Tether. Back in town, Boyd and Ellis talk about his time in the woods, but Ellis gets mad about him finding no answers in the woods. 
Ellis then confides in his father about his fears about Fatima and also tells him he proposed. Christy patches up Jim, and after Jim and Tabitha realize they have much to discuss with one another. Randall tries to take his firearm off the bus and argues with Donna about it before Boyd comes and demands he leaves it, as residents aren't allowed open carry. Tabitha talks with Tian Chun about getting into the storage, as she and her family lost their belongings in the house collapse. Tian Chun then tells her that Matthews can stay with her until a new house opens up. Kenny and Ellis venture into the woods to check the traps, and they find Kelly, the bus goer at the diner, with a rod through her head. Victor discovers his violin is missing from his room and finds out Jade was in his room while he was gone as Ethan let him in. He goes to Tian Chin's to retrieve the violin, and Jade tells him about the symbol he's been seeing and shows him the picture of himself, but Victor tells Jade to leave him alone. Fatima becomes Elgin's proxy, and he asks her if they have a body of water nearby because he saw it, so she takes him to the Brundles. Tabitha and Julie get clothes from the barn, and when they leave, Tabitha has a vision of two young girls looking back at her. Everyone in the town because Raven Simone with all of these visions. Boyd visits with Abby at her grave and wonders how everything that happened with Martin and in the dungeon could have been real. Kelly tells the trio what she wants to be said to her mother in a letter as she knows she won't make it, and then she starts screaming due to pain. Boyd hears the screams and finds them. He then is the one to pull the rod out, which kills her. Ellis finds Fatima at the diner and asks her to get married sooner, and she agrees. Tabitha finds Ethan playing with building stones, and she recognizes it from her time underground. She then sees the two little girls again. Boyd tells Donna about Kelly while she continues to ask him what happened in the words. The episode ends with Kenny finding Sarah tied up in the basement of the church, and he knows she is the one responsible for his father's death. Episode 4 This Way Gone A flashback shows the day Kenny and Tian Chen brought Bing Qian Lu to Christy to stay at the school. Later that day, he talks with Boyd, and Boyd asks him to be his deputy. In the present, Kenny finds Boyd and brings him to Sarah. Boyd talks to Sarah alone, and she tells him she followed him into the tree and ended up back at the church somehow. She also tells Boyd there is no way she can live there again. Boyd speaks to Kenny alone and explains that Sarah is connected to the town, as something is talking to her. But Kenny still wants her in the box, and as the two argue, Boyd collapses. Julie takes Ethan to Colony House to see Victor, but Victor is still upset with him about letting Jade into his room. Fatima asks Julie to be one of her bridesmaids, and later, Julie offers to talk with Elgin if he needs someone to talk to. Christy looks Boyd over, and he shies away from letting her look at his arm as he knows something has been crawling inside. He also wonders about cognitive impairments related to Parkinson's. Jade finds Bacta, the bus driver, at the bar drinking alone, and Bacta speaks about blaming herself for the bus getting stuck in the town. Jade tells her not to beat herself up, and the two commiserate over their circumstances and whether it's what they deserve. Tabitha looks for Jim and finds him watching the bus people go through their belongings. He tells her about what the man on the radio said about knowing everything. He also wonders if the town was designed to see their reactions and if it all is just an experiment. Jim goes to Colony House and asks Donna about the message over the radio. Donna tells him it's not good that people are watching them and to keep their mouths shut until they know more. Donna was the only other person who heard the full radio conversation. Randall freaks out about people going through his things at Colony House and pushes another house guest. This eventually prompts Donna to kick him out and take him to the bus where he will now live. Kenny asks Sarah questions about her abilities, but she won't tell him much. She does tell him about what happened to her father and her role in it which he already knew. Boyd finds Kenny in the place his father died, and Kenny confronts him about knowing Sarah killed his father. The episode ends with him telling Boyd that Sarah is going in the box whether he agrees or not. Episode 5 Lullaby At night, Randall can't sleep due to the monsters knocking on the bus door. He confronts them but then gets angry when they walk away. Jade sees a vision of the man in the photograph holding up a book with the symbol in it bleeding. Boyd is woken up at the church by Jim and Tabitha, who've come to see Sarah after Kenny told them about her return. Boyd tells them Sarah is staying out of the box, and Tabitha threatens Sarah before they leave. Later, Ethan asks his parents to see Sarah. Christy and Marielle eat together in bed, and Christy worries about whether or not she's the same person she knew before. Victor comes to see Jade at the bar, and offers to tell him whatever he knows if Jade will play the violin for him. Jade agrees, and the two head into the woods. Tabitha and Jim decide to let Ethan talk to Sarah, and he goes to tell her how much of a monster she is. Boyd goes to Colony House and tells Donna about Sarah. Donna tells him she thinks this has betrayed the one thing people have left, Faith in Boyd. In the woods, Victor takes Jade to an area where he puts all the old vehicles. 
He then sits on his mother's car and asks Jay to play Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star on the violin. Elgin goes to the church and finds Sarah there. The two talk and share a moment as they both feel like outsiders. Sarah goes to the diner, and Tian Chun confronts her about her actions before giving her the box of her belongings and telling her never to return. Outside the diner, Kenny rips the box out of Sarah's arms and dumps the belongings. He then smashes a special ornament before telling Sarah to stay away from his mother. Marielle gives Christy a haircut, and afterward, Tilly comes by to see Christy. She gives her the morphine she'd had on her and tells them about Sarah being back, which prompts Christy to run off before Marielle gets to her. Victor tells Jade the man in the photograph's name was Christopher, and he was liked at first, but then everyone died. He started seeing the symbol, and he changed. Similar to what Jade is experiencing, Tabitha takes the building blocks out near the cave she and Victor escape through, and multiple children come out of the woods toward her. They appear to start touching her, and she screams. But when Jade finds her, the kids aren't there. Jim tells Boyd about the voice on the radio, and tells them they must start working together. Boyd goes to see Tian Chun at the diner while dealing with the pain in his arm from the worms. Marielle steals morphine, and Randall pulls seats from the bus onto the roof to make a little workshop. Episode 6 Pot Do. Boyd talks to Tian Chin and reiterates that everything he did with Sarah, he was doing for the town's good, as things are changing, and he has to do whatever he can to get people home. When Boyd gets to the church, the place has been cleared out, and a ballerina appears, dancing to a music box. They dance together briefly before worms start coming out of her mouth. Boyd then comes to the diner, never having actually left. With a bruised skull and trouble walking, Kenny accompanies him to the clinic. Ellis and Fatima help Donna load up the truck with food which is dwindling while all of the new townspeople. They're left in charge of closing up Colony House as Donna goes to Tian Chin's. Christy looks in Marielle's bag for a hair tie and finds a packet for a treatment center. Christy then confronts Marielle about relapsing, and Marielle admits to taking some of the liquid morphine. The two then argue as Christy starts riffling through the medicine cabinet. While Boyd and Kenny walk to the clinic, Boyd's arms hurt, and he tells Kenny about the worms in his arms. He then sees and hears the music box again before the ballerina comes out of the cellar while Kenny sees none of it. At the clinic, Boyd tells Christy about Martin giving him his blood and the worms. He also asks her to end things if they get too bad with him. Donna works with Tian Chun and the Matthews to sort the food. Jim starts to worry once he realizes they only have enough food for about a month. Boyd sees and hears the music box again, and the ballerina comes and tries to choke him. When Marielle finds him, he pulls his gun on her briefly. Ellis and Fatima argue over Ellis, not telling her about Boyd hiding Sarah. They hear a commotion in the kitchen and find Dale accusing Elgin and the other new people of stealing food. Dale then orders them to leave with a knife, and when Ellis intervenes, he gets stabbed in the chest. With Ellis dying, Elgin and Fatima work together to get him to the clinic. Elgin runs outside and gets the van with monsters beginning to swarm, and then he and Fatima get Ellis into the van and drive to the clinic. Once at the clinic, everyone works together to get the pressure off Ellis's chest so he can breathe. Christy tells Boy they need to perform a blood transfusion or Ellis's organs will start to fail. Boyd, being the same blood type, refuses, as he's unwilling to spread whatever is in his body to save Ellis. Kenny tries to force him before offering up himself as someone Boyd can pass the blood to so he can then help Ellis. Marielle and Christy see the worms under Boyd's skin, and then Boyd decides to pass the blood on and heads outside, taunting the monsters to come out. Once they do, Boyd cuts his hand and slices one of the monsters' throats. He grasps the monster's neck, infecting him with his blood and the monster seemingly dies, with the other monsters looking on curiously. Having successfully passed the blood, Christy before the blood transfusion on Ellis. Ellis wakes up and is able to breathe. Fatima takes a moment with Christy and breaks down over the thought of almost losing Ellis. She then asks Christy for a pregnancy test. Kenny tells Boyd that he should have listened to him, as the two watch the monster Boyd infected from the window, wondering if he's actually dead. Episode 7 Belly of the Beast the morning after Ellis is stabbing, Fatima discovers she's pregnant and tells Christy she's not yet ready to tell Ellis. The clinic crew goes outside to figure out what to do with the monster's body. Boyd and Christy want to bring it into the clinic to look inside its body while Kenny pushes back. They eventually decide to get the monster inside and send Ellis, Fatima, and Elgin back to Colony House, wanting to keep the dead monster a secret. While outside, Jim sees Randall flying a drone over the house and approaches him inside the bus asking him to go for a walk. While those left at the clinic prepare to open up the monster, Marielle gets ill and starts to go through withdrawal. Ethan speaks with Victor at Colony House, asking him why he's being mean to him. 
Victor tells him he's trying to protect him and wants him to stay away because bad things happen to his friends here. Though Victor does then invite him to help him measure the trees. Christy gets Marielle settled in bed. And later, she and Boyd both admit to one another they're scared to open the monster up. Tabitha visits Jade at the bar and asks why he wasn't surprised to find her in a frantic state in the woods. He then tells her he's been through it when the soldier attacked him and Jim found him. Jim and Randall walk to the Matthews RV and Jim tells him about the voice on the radio and his theories about them being a part of an experiment. Inside the RV, Jim gets the antenna, hoping they can attach it to the drone so it can fly as high as possible. Randall then asks him why he's never considered people within the town being in on the experiment. Boyd, Christy, and Kenny start dissecting the monster. But when Christy starts to cut, the monster moves and Kenny storms out. Christy goes after him and he tells her he's scared of what's inside the monster and can't watch her do something that might get her killed because he loves her. Christy then goes back into the clinic alone. Marielle wakes up, looks for Christy, and discovers the monster is missing. She screams for help, hearing and seeing the music box before Boyd finds her, and he shoots at the monster, who starts coming toward them. Marielle then wakes up, realizing she was dreaming. Fatima tells Donna she's pregnant, and that it's a medical miracle because she was told she could never have kids. Fatima feels like the place is mocking her, but Donna tells her that they all assume everything happening is bad, but it could be a miracle. Jade shows Tabitha the picture of Christopher and Victor, and they talk about the different things they've seen. Tabitha then looks at the symbol Jade sees and tells him she saw it in the tunnels underground. Boyd and Christy start opening up the monster, and Kenny returns to help. Once they open him up, they discover he's human inside, but his organs are all shriveled up. Feeling defeated, Christy starts stabbing his organs out of frustration, and bile comes out of his gallbladder, which they bottle up. Fatima prepares to tell Ellis about the pregnancy. The episode ends with Elgin taking a bath, and he hears the music box and is dragged under the water. Episode 8. Forest for the Trees. The episode begins with Kenny having a nightmare about cicadas burning his arm, and when he wakes up, he still has the mark on his arm. Jim and Randall test the drone with the antenna attached, and talk about the merits of the experiment. Randall wants to look for the people on the inside and wonders if those who've died are actually in on the experiment. Sarah tells Boyd that she wants to return to the woods because she's unwanted in the town and wants to do something to help. Victor visits Ethan and gives him a jacket that was his when he was younger. Ethan then gives Victor a picture he drew of himself and they travel to the diner, along with Julie, to help Tian Chun. Boyd checks on Ellis at Colony House and Ellis gets ready to tell him his news about the pregnancy before Donna interrupts. Boyd asks Donna to give Sarah a job before telling him about Elgin almost dying in his sleep. Boyd then finds Elgin, and Elgin tells him about his dream at the end of episode 7, which concluded with him waking up spitting up water. Elgin denies telling anyone about what happened at the clinic, and Boyd shows him the bile they procured. Elgin suggests they make a silver bullet to get it inside the monsters. At the diner, Ethan finds a toy in his jacket pocket that he returns to Victor. Soon after that, Jade and Tabitha come in, and Jade yells at Victor, chasing him outside and berating him for not telling him about the symbol in the tunnels. Jim tells Randall that he wants to watch and see what the monsters do when they think they're not being watched. So, he proposes they sneak to the RV at night and watch them. Tabitha visits Victor in his room, and he tells her that the people who look for answers don't come back. Boyd goes to Kenny with Elgin's suggestion about the silver bullet, and the two travel to the clinic to get more bile. At the clinic, they find a distressed Marielle, who tells them she heard something coming from the boiler room, where the monster has been held. Boyd and Kenny travel to the boiler room and hear buzzing when they get inside. When they pull the sheet off the monster, a bunch of cicadas are swarming the body. When they meet back with Christy and Marielle, Kenny tells them about his dream before they are interrupted by Donna. Boyd tells Donna about the monster, but when he goes to show her the body, the bugs are all gone. They then agree to burn the monster and are unaware that Randall is nearby, watching them from the woods. Boyd and Kenny burn the monster. Victor and Tabitha go through Eloise's drawings, and Tabitha finds one of a tower. Victor tells her that his mother said she was going to the tower to save the children there the night the bad things happened. Back in town, Kenny hears the buzzing again, and a man emerges from a house covered in blood, screaming for help. Jim gets to the RV to meet Randall and finds him in the woods, where he has Donna tied to a tree because she thinks Donna is the inside man. Episode 9 Ball of Magic Fire Boyd sends Ethan home and then tells Julie and Kenny to go door to door, warning people not to go to sleep as people can die in their nightmares now. Julie then tells him about Jim being at the RV. In the woods, Randall tells Jim about what he saw outside the clinic. 
And when Jim tries to help Donna, Randall pushes him down. Boyd shows up soon after and gets Randall to put his knife down. Then Randall throws the van keys into the woods, forcing them into the RV. Sarah and Kenny stay at the post office, and she tells him that things feel different and wrong. She worries that the fears of those who've died in the town have become a part of the forest. Inside the RV, Boyd handcuffs Randall after he and Jim get into it. Ellis brings Christy and Marielle to a private room at Colony House. And while gathering supplies, Ellis confides in Christy his nervousness about Fatima's pregnancy. Boyd prepares the bile bullets as the monsters surround the RV. Donna suggests they let Randall go outside to shoot them, and Boyd gives him a choice to do it, but then the monsters stop walking toward the RV, and they all begin to hear the music box play. Sarah tries to apologize to Kenny, but he doesn't want her apologies. He tells her to shut up, and she tells him she's tired and doesn't want to be his monster anymore. He proceeds to tell her where Boyd keeps his spare gun if she is really about that life. In the RV, the music stops, and thumping starts underneath the vehicle. Randall escapes out the back while Jim and Donna break for the van. Boyd stays in the RV momentarily, and Abby's ghost appears, telling him to return to her. Boyd leaves the RV, shooting at the monsters, and eventually gets to the van. While in the woods, Randall is attacked by the cicadas. Kenny finds Sarah with a gun at Boyd's desk. She tells him she doesn't want to cause any more pain and plays Russian roulette. She pulls the trigger once, and the gun doesn't fire before Kenny takes it from her. While alone, Marielle hears the cicadas and is attacked by them. When Christy arrives, she can't see the bugs. Boyd and Donna return to Colony House and try to keep everyone calm. When Jim tries to leave, Boyd pulls his gun out before Christy calls him upstairs. With Marielle unresponsive but breathing, Boyd tries to comfort Christy before Ellis calls him to speak with Elgin. Elgin tells Boyd that once he learned Fatima was pregnant, he remembered his dream. A boy in all white repeating a phrase. Bacta then reveals that the phrase is actually part of a nursery rhyme. Episode 10. Season Finale. Once upon a time, Donna, Elgin, and Dale take the van to the RV as they look for Randall's body. They find him alive but unconscious in the woods, and he starts screaming, as do Marielle and Julie. Boyd, Sarah, and Kenny walk through the woods, heading toward the clearing Boyd emerged from after failing to free Martin. Boyd asks Sarah if she has ever seen the boy in white, and she answers no. Sarah begins to hear the music box and screaming, as her nose begins to bleed and she becomes physically distressed. She sees the music box, but Boyd and Kenny cannot see anything. Sarah tells Boyd that it is laughing at Boyd and they want to hurt everyone. She then tells Boyd that he has to make the music stop. Tabitha tells Jim about what Victor's mother said about saving the children in the tower. She asks for permission from Jim to go into the woods and look for the tower. She then asks Victor if he knows where the tower is, and he doesn't know where it is but does know where the bottle tree is that can lead her there. Ellis and Fatima decide to get married that day. At the bar, Jade works to reorient his perspective and find a different way to look at the symbol. Tom appears to him and tells him that Jade knows the symbol is in the tunnel and answers are within the tunnel. Reggie goes to the shed and slits Matthias's throat before stealing a gun from the shed. Boyd retreats to the church and vents to God before Donna arrives. He tells her what Sarah told him and blames himself for bringing something back to the town. Donna tells him to come to Colony House to see his son and Fatima get married. Jade ties a rope to a tree and enters the tunnel. He eventually comes to a room where he is surrounded by children on a slab, muttering a phrase over and over again. And when he looks up, he can see the symbol in a formation on the ceiling. Victor and Tabitha go into the woods and find the bottle tree. He tells Tabitha he found his mother there the day after everyone died. He explains to her that the faraway tree there is special and gives her his lunchbox to take with her. She enters the tree and emerges in the woods, where she walks a ways and finds the famous lighthouse. After Ellis makes mention of a light in the darkness during his vows, Boyd races off to the trailer in the woods to grab a torch. When he leaves the trailer, he encounters Reggie, who shoots him in the shoulder after blaming him for bringing something back to the town. Boyd is able to kill him before he can shoot him again. Boyd gets to the clearing and lights the torch, which brings him back to the room where he hears and sees the music box and Marielle, Randall, and Julie's souls chained to the wall while they are still in coma back in town. Before he can smash the music box, Abby appears and tries to stop him from destroying the box, but Boyd chooses to break the box, which wakes Marielle, Randall, and Julie up. Back in the clearing, Boyd sees the dog who quickly runs off. Tabitha climbs the tower stairs and hears the children repeating the phrase she previously heard. At the top, the boy in white appears and pushes her out the window. The season ends with Tabitha waking up in St. Anthony Hospital where she is told by a doctor some hikers found her a few days ago on a trail. 
She looks out the window to see a small town below, and she has escaped from Ville, but her family is still there. That is it for season 2 of From. Thanks for watching.